everyone! My name is Susanna, but you can call me Suze. We're going to kick the day off by singing about God together. So everyone, stand up and sing along. You know when I'm lonely. You know when I'm sad. I know. And then you are with me. Yeah, you are with me. trust you. Yeah, I can trust you. You don't want perfection. You just want my best. And when my mind is racing, you will give me rest. God is greater, greater than my feelings. He knows everything. Everything God is greater, greater than my feelings. He knows everything, He knows everything. You know when I'm lonely, you know when I'm sad, I know. And then you are with me, yeah, you are with me. You know when I'm worried, you know when I'm mad, I know. I can trust you, yeah, I can trust you You don't want perfection, you just want my best And when my mind is racing, you will give me rest God is greater, greater than my feelings He knows everything Everything God is greater, greater than my feelings. He knows everything, He knows everything. You are greater than all I feel. You know it all, and you always will. I trust in you with all that I've got. Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not. You are greater than all I feel. You know it all, and you always will. I trust in you with all that I've got. Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not. God is greater than my feelings. He knows everything. He knows everything. He knows everything. God is greater. Great singing, everyone! We all have feelings, but no matter what, God is greater than our feelings. And that's what this Blueprint series is all about. Have any of you ever watched a show on TV or a video on YouTube about building or construction? Well, I have the honor of being one of the hosts of the hit construction show, Build It, with my good pal, Skip. Take a look at what happened while we were filming our latest episode. Working with the excavator, working with the excavator, working with the excavator, yeah! Beep, 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 Hey beep, Skip, what are you beep. working on? Oh, hey Suze, I'm just working on the plans for an office I'm about to start building downtown. Okay, so how's it going? It's going great, just finishing up the blueprints, like I always do. Oh, uh, really? You always do blueprints like this? Yeah. It's not exactly to scale, seeing as how I'm working with Legos, but I'm, it always works out. And what are you doing with that excavator? Oh, I'm getting used to handling big equipment so that I'll be ready to tear down the old mill to prepare the new job site. So you think that by practicing with this toy excavator, you'll be able to operate a real one? Well, why wouldn't I? I thought you would want to help me. Want to give it a try? Skip. You have got to be kidding me. There's no way that you or I can do this big of a job. What are you so worried about? I was asked to do the job and I know what I'm doing. I've got everything under control. See the plans? That's no plan, Skip. That's not an official blueprint. If this is the only plan that you've got, 
then there's so many terrible things that could happen to you, the builders, or the people that are gonna actually be in this office. Calm down, Susie Q. My blueprint is just a scaled down representation of all the work that has to get done. But you haven't included the important safety measures like plumbing, underground piping, gas, and power. Skip, there is nothing about this building that will be built to code. It's just fine. We'll be wearing our hard hats like we always do. Does that help you feel any better? Not exactly. What if a big storm comes? With torrential downpour. See? No worries. Still standing. Oh yeah? What if strong winds come? From a huge tornado. See? No worries. Still standing. Well, what about a volcano erupting? And hot lava shooting everywhere. See? No worries. Just a little cleanup, but um, still standing. As a matter of fact, a barrel of monkeys could attack the building site. And see, no worries, still standing. Oh man, those are some serious feelings we're dealing with here. I think there's something important we can all learn from that. Whenever we start to feel our emotions building up, we need to deal with how we feel, and here are three steps into doing just that. The first step is to stop and figure out how we're really feeling. This can be tough, but it's important because if we're not careful, we can let our emotions get the best of us. If that happens, things can seem worse than they actually are, which can cause us to make decisions that we can't undo. So let's stop right now and talk about the emotions we just saw. Skip wasn't worried at all about the big job he was working on, but I sure was. Some of the things we face are big and scary, and we can all worry sometimes. But worry starts in small ways and gets out of control in no time. And before we know it, we'll find ourselves scared of what might happen next. So now that we've stopped and figured out how we're feeling, the next thing we need to do is look at what's really going on. Some of the things worrying me were real, but the other things, like a barrel of monkeys falling from the sky, were a little out there. But if I would have looked at what was really going on, I would have remembered that I have no reason to worry. And that's because God has it all under control. I know that because I do my best to listen to what he says. And that's step number three. Listen, we've got to listen to God's blueprint for life, the Bible. God gave us the Bible as the blueprint for us to deal with how we feel. Here, check this out. Hey, everybody, listen up. Here's what God has to say. Has to say about what? Well, I was just about to tell you Wait, that... is it good news or bad news? Like, good news as when we're having pancakes for dinner? Pancakes? What are you even talking about? Oh, no. Is it bad news? As in velociraptors are prowling around downtown with laser beams coming from their eyes and they're stealing everyone's pants? So many pants! It's got me so worried. Uh, let, let me stop you right there. That's what our story is about. About pants? Ha ha, not pants. Worrying. There are so many things we can worry about and God has something to say about it. So let's jump into our story about Gideon. 
Gideon, my main man. But wait, what did he have to worry about? Great question, and great place to start. So Gideon was an Israelite. The Israelites were God's chosen people, but they started to do some really bad things that upset him. Oh, like cheating on tests and staying up past their bedtimes? That's like bad, bad. Oh, even really badder than that. They started to disobey God. So he let a mean group of people, the Midianites, rule over them. For years, they would attack the Israelites and destroy their crops. Oh man, bullies who take your lunch money, definitely lots to worry about. Oh yeah, and this went on forever. Finally, the Israelites shouted out to God, asking for his help. Time to throw up the bat signal. Even though the Israelites had started worshiping false gods, the one true God heard their cries. He had an idea and was about to come through for them big time. He was going to give them a shrink ray gun so they could turn the Midianites into little baby ants. Now that's an idea. Oh, it's an idea, all right. And that's where Gideon comes back into the picture. Gideon, who was hiding while separating the wheat they used for bread, was worried that if the Midianites knew he had food, they would take it. That's when God sent an angel who said to Gideon, Mighty warrior, God is with you. Gideon did not feel like God was with them and asked the angel about all the bad things that were happening. That's when God himself spoke to Gideon. He said, You are strong. Go and save Israel from the power of Midian. I am sending you. Well, I guess it doesn't get much more clear than that, right? Well, you'd think so, but Gideon was still worried. He wondered why on earth God would choose him to go save everyone. It's not like he came from a strong family. Gideon didn't feel important at all. God reassured Gideon that he would be with him, but Gideon needed a sign. So he asked God to stick around for a minute while he prepared an offering. I'm sure God didn't mind waiting since he's got all the time in the world. <laughs> Gideon whipped up some bread and goat stew, brought it back and placed it on a rock. That's when the angel touched it with a stick and the whole thing went up in flames. Flaming bread and flaming stew and flaming rocks. There weren't any flaming rocks, but Gideon did make an altar there for God. And speaking of altars, that same night, Gideon snuck around. Like a ninja dressed in all black, throwing ninja stars at the other altars and slicing a pole in half using a samurai sword. Gideon didn't have ninja stars or a samurai sword but he did destroy the altar and pole his family had used for worshiping false gods. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Gideon did all this at night because he was afraid and worried that his family would be very angry with him. When the townspeople saw what Gideon had done, they wanted him to pay for it. But nothing bad happened to Gideon. Sounds like that was a close call. It sure was. A little while later, the Midianites started moving in for another attack. And it didn't take long for Gideon to start worrying again. He knew God had promised to use him to save Israel and all, but uh, he needed another reminder. What did Gideon have in mind? It's not like God could just shoot him a text. Uh, yeah, no cell phones. But Gideon did have an idea. You see, dew would form overnight and make the ground, as well as everything else around it, wet. So Gideon left a piece of wool on the ground overnight and asked God to make the wool wet from the dew, but leave the ground dry. Wet wool, dry ground, check. Sure enough, God did just that. But Gideon still wasn't sure and asked God if he'd do just the opposite the next night. Okay, so dry wool and wet ground, got it. When Gideon woke up the next morning, that's exactly what he found. The wool was dry, but the ground around it was covered in dew. Please tell me Gideon trusted God this time. Gideon was now confident that God wanted him to fight the Midianites. He knew that the Lord thought he was good enough to do the job. So Gideon decided to stop worrying, trust God, and do exactly what God wanted him to do. So the next time we find ourselves worrying about anything, we can trust God. Gideon was so worried about how it would all turn out that he forgot God was with him and had a good plan all along. God was patient with Gideon and kept reminding him that he was made with a great purpose. That's when Gideon's worry stopped and his trust in God started. Gideon learned that he can really trust God and we can too. The next time we find ourselves asking what if and worrying, 
we can stop, look, and listen to the truth of God's Word. Doing these things will help us stop the worry and see that God will never leave us. He wants what's best for us, and because of that, we can trust Him. That's what we need to know today. Everyone say it with me. When I feel worried, I can trust God. That's it. You can deal with how you feel when you stop, look, and listen. Now we're gonna play a game called Spot It. Two cards will appear on the screen, and your job is to spot the object that is on both of the cards as quickly as possible. You will have 10 seconds before the cards disappear, so try to spot it fast. On your mark, get set, go! game everyone now there's one more way to deal with all of your feelings and that's to worship God by singing so let's do it talk about what you learned today and pray together. And we'll see you guys next week. 